My people, it's been a while, but here we are. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me. I really appreciate it. And I'm super excited for today's video because I'm gonna be answering some of the questions that you left me here on YouTube and on Instagram. And to make the video more interesting, I'll be taking you guys around some old rooftops here in Maputo, basically the top of old buildings that were built pre-independence which means 1940s around that basically at that time architecturally speaking rooftops were dead space and today those same empty rooftops are good places to go and chill take photos and so on so i thought it would be nice to show you guys that i won't be revealing the address of the rooftops just because you know i need to keep the privacy of the owners and tenants of the building usually to have access to a rooftop you need to know someone that lives in the building i know somebody in all of the buildings that i'm going to but I won't reveal the address just because it's not a touristy attraction it's a place where people live and have their homes and they wouldn't want strangers going in and out just because I made a vlog about it floor and most of the old buildings don't have elevator because you know people can never come into a consensus and contribute to buy the elevator on a building like this you usually have people f with different incomes and not all of them are able to contribute to the purchase of an elevator and in some buildings the people that can afford an elevator will buy the elevator and then have a key that only them can use. Everyone that didn't contribute can't use the elevator. So that ends up happening. Usually people that live on the first floor, second floor, third floor, they also don't need the elevator, so they, are, they don't wanna buy it. And that's why in many of them, you have to climb 10, 11, 15 floors because yeah, it just happens. And most of the elevators pre-independence are super old and they have to be replaced. We made it to the first rooftop and the view is breathtaking. As you can see, the sea is over there. And the rule of thumb is that the further you are from the sea, the closer you are to the city center. So this right here is the city center. Plus that area over there is also considered city center. Up there we have different neighborhoods and so on, but this is the city center. And I'm loving the view. All right, the first question I got from 888 is what do you do for work? And for work, for the longest time now, I've been working with marketing. And lately I've been dipping into sales as well. So basically marketing and sales. And usually I help clients or I help my bosses improve their social media with the experience that I have from running my YouTube channels, my Instagram, and just consuming a lot of knowledge about digital marketing. I'm able to help other people um, in that area for their companies. So whatever company I work in, I'm usually dealing with social media, trying to grow their Facebook, their Instagram and stuff like that. And it's really fun when something that I love doing, which is being on the internet, becomes my job and so on. Another thing that's really fun is that all of my bosses up until now were very supportive of my creative side. They watch my vlogs, they watch my videos, they like my pictures. So it's really, really nice when you're able to work with people that know who you are. So yeah, that's what I do for work. Next question is from Prince Danny. And he says, hi Yara, this question is about the other side of Maputo Bay, Katembe. Do you see it being developed and what, and what would you want to see developed? So Katembe, I showed you guys on my second vlog about Maputo. It's one of my favorite vlogs actually. And there's a lot of land being sold at the moment. The prices of the land are rising up because Katembe now is very accessible because of the bridge. So yeah, I feel like that place should have more hotels, more even clubs. It would be nice to, you know, cross the bridge, go clubbing and come back in the morning. That would be ideal. Obviously in a world without pandemic, that would be really good. But um, there's space for a lot of things in Katembe, especially because many people are living there full time while working in Maputo city, because again, you just have to cross the bridge, which takes 
10, 15, 20 minutes. So yeah, I don't know. It's a nice place. The beach is not the most beautiful. So I wouldn't swim at the Katembe beach. I would straight away go to Inyaka. But again, there's a lot that can be done there. Next question is from Timothy Kimiti. And he says, welcome back. Thanks for the beautiful video. I'm glad you liked the video. In terms of security and also border crossing from the northern part of Mozambique to Maputo, best advice for people planning for road trips. Okay, so my advice if you wanna do a road trip is to avoid obviously the problematic areas, which at the moment is Cabo Delgado. Um, you can come from Lishinga, you can come from Nampula, but always make sure you have a Mozambican with you. Don't ever do this trip by yourself because things can happen along the way with people that don't speak English or don't or just speak Portuguese or don't even speak Portuguese. So you always need to have someone, a local person that knows the road by your side or in a car in front of you. Road tripping is much easier here in the south of the country because, well, it's not necessarily easier. We have areas in which there is no road. It's just, you know, sand road. But um, I'm just used to road tripping in the south, so I don't know what it's like in the center or up north, but always have a local and you can't go wrong with having someone that has done it before to do it with you. Next question is from Gina Lu, and he says, I'm a musician, I appreciate the music stuff, so who are some of the top artists in Mozambique right now, who do you like? And I like to see you dancing. Does it have a local special style different from South or West Africa? Yes, I would say that our music is completely different than um, West Africa. Um, the most original music genre we ever, we ever had was Zukuta Panza, which kind of died lately, I don't know why, but that was the best um, style of music. Also, Marabenta is pretty common. And when it comes to top artists, I would say the first one that comes to my mind is Mr. Bao. He is our icon and his music is the type of music that you dance at the family parties, everybody dances, everybody has fun dancing to his music. Most people when they get married, they want him in their wedding. So Mr. Bao for sure. Another one that's popping right now is DJ Tariku because he did this song, Yaba Buluku, that's very similar to South African Amapiano. is one of my favorite songs ever made by a Mozambican and I'm so proud of him. He just uh, made a remix with Barna Boy, which is big. So I'm really proud of him for that. And then I can also think of Leilizi when it comes to hip hop. We have Leilizi, we have Irnani. I think those two are the best. There are other hip hop artists there are really good but Leilizi and Ernani have to be my favorites and yeah I think those are the names that come to my mind when it comes to like top artists there are many more but that's what I'm gonna say for now Okay, so we're on our way to the rooftop number two, and again, there's no elevator, <laughs> but the views are worth it. All right, so we made it to rooftop number two, and as I told you, the views do not disappoint. On this side, we have the view to what I would say is the city center. We have the beautiful mosque there. We have the buildings, and on this side, we have the beautiful view to the sea and the buildings up there. It's amazing. I love it. I love this rooftop. Now again, let me answer more of your questions. Next question is from Nasser Varashand and he asks, how many native languages exist in Mozambique? How many can you speak? Which tribe do you belong in? And how did you learn to speak English? Because from what I know, Portuguese is the official language. How did you manage to practice English without English speakers around? Okay, those are so many questions in one. 
First thing, how many native languages in Mozambique? I'm not sure. There are so many. In the south, you have, besides Shangana, that is the most common, you have Ronga. You have so many variations of the same thing. So I wouldn't be able to tell. I'm not even going to say any number because I don't want to lie to you. I don't know, but there are many. The north has their languages, the center has their languages, and the south has their own languages. The tribe that I belong in that I belong in is the Shangana tribe. I am Mashangana, that's how they call it. I even tried to learn Shangana. I know all the theory, but I would have to go and live in the suburbs to be able to practice Shangana. And that's something that I still want to do because I want to be fluent in Shangana. People here, they speak Portuguese, but then they mix it with Shangana because most of them speak Shangana. So yeah, back in the times of, uh, you know, when we were still colonized, most Mozambicans would abandon the Shangana language and just focus on knowing Portuguese. So in many households, people were not allowed to speak Shangana, and many people didn't feel like they should teach their kids how to speak Shangana. So that's why many of us who were born, especially in the city, we don't speak Shangana, we only speak Portuguese. But I still wish I could speak Shangana. And one day I will speak Shangana. How did I learn English? I started learning English in high school. Here we have English as a high school module on the sixth grade. So that's when I started learning English and then I always took English very seriously. I thought it was the most fun subject. So I always took it seriously. I would always put in effort to learn the language. And then back at home, I would listen to music with lyrics in Portuguese, listen to movies with subtitles in Portuguese. So that's mainly how I was able to learn the language. And when it comes to practice, I had one friend that was always obsessed with English. So me and her would practice, and we would practice different accents as well. So I, for the most part, got most of my English from American TV shows. That's why, for many people, I sound American. But I know that Americans know that I'm not American. They can tell. Because, yeah, I spent my time mimicking the accent from American shows. And that's how I was able to speak. I also studied abroad. so. When I was there, I was able to speak English full time. And that's the case for many people that live here and speak English. They usually studied abroad, university, or they study in international schools where they learn in English. Next question is by Cuts Off the Chain. And he asks, um, does Maputo or any city or town in Mozambique have a nightlife type of scene with clubs, bars? It doesn't, it's not a necessity, but I'm just inquiring in case I want to go out for a night. So Maputo's nightlife is amazing. The pandemic ruined our nightlife. Because since the pandemic, we can't go out. If we go out, we need to, go, we need to leave the, the restaurant by 8 PM, which really sucks. We really cannot enjoy ourselves anymore. We used to have a very, very vibrant nightlife with like parties that would end at 6 a.m. when the sun is up and then you would go from the club, have breakfast. It was amazing. And especially because our climate is very good. It's sunny all the time. So we would just party and the parties would start at 11. So since the pandemic, obviously things have changed. We have a curfew. We need to all be home by 10 p.m. And the workers in the restaurants also have to be home by 10 p.m. So. By 8 p.m., the restaurants already shut the music off, which sucks. So I would say that our nightlife is amazing, but because of the pandemic, you wouldn't be able to experience that. Uh, most tourists that are here right now, they are mostly enjoying, you know, going to the beach and doing things during the day because at night, it doesn't make sense. Unless you can always go and eat somewhere, you can start at 3 p.m., you can have lunch, you can watch the sunset, but then by the time it's 8, you have to be out. So. Again, our nightlife is amazing, pre-pandemic. And if you want to come here, you want to enjoy the nightlife, there are many bars, karaoke, and there's one or two clubs where you can go in and dance until it's time to shut down. So yeah, I love our nightlife. We love African music. We dance a lot. People love dancing. So I would totally recommend coming to Moz, maybe when there's no more curfew, to enjoy the nightlife. Another question also from Cuts of Chain. Um, I love the country. I can't get enough of watching the beauty of Mozambique. When I, when I come, I want to have an idea of where I should go for a tour or fishing or to see the wildlife. So when it comes to tours, obviously I'm local guys. So I, I don't use tourist services for almost nothing because I can always find friends and go there with friends or family. 
but do do your Googles. I always say that Google and see what other tourists have done when they came here. Check some hashtags on Instagram like Mozambique Tourism, uh, Mozambique Tour Guide. You probably find people and reviews from that those people as well. When it comes to wildlife, we have a very beautiful park with wildlife in Katembe, very close to Maputo, just cross the bridge, and you have elephants, you have giraffes. So that is the closest one that we have. But we have Gorongosa, which many people fly to Beira to visit the Gorongosa Park. Wildlife fishing, we have, you can do fishing anywhere. You can take a private boat to Santa Maria, and they will, ha they will have you like fish from their boat, and then you can take the fish back and cook. So we have a lot of those experiences. Just check out TripAdvisor and check out the hashtags on Instagram. And yeah, do your Googles. There's a lot to see when it comes to that. We are on our way to our third and final rooftop and this time there's an elevator as you can see which had to be because we are going all the way to the 20th floor and fun fact this elevator was the first one that I've ever been in my whole life hold that thought the reason I said the elevator was the first one I had ever been in is because this is the building in which I lived since I was born until I was 14 15 this is the area in which I grew up and this is called the Polana area. Towards there, you have Avenida Julio Nyerere that I've talked to you guys about. And yeah, this is the area. Towards that side, they also call it Bairro do Museu. So I am made in Bairro do Museu. And here in Polana, because it's closer to the sea, the real estate price is much higher. So to rent here, to buy real estate is much more expensive. On the other two buildings that we were in the city center, it's much cheaper. You could rent a three bedroom there for the same amount that you would rent a two or even one bedroom in this Polana area. And yeah, enough of real estate. Let me answer your last question. Okay, next question is from Nix W. And he says, how do I go about booking a holiday in Mozambique? Well, again, do your Googles, um, do your research. When it comes to accommodation, I always check booking.com and Airbnb. So those are the ones that I advise you check as well. And then when it comes to things to do, you can always check TripAdvisor. They have many ideas there. Oh, this wind. The wind doesn't want my sweater to be great. So when it comes for things to do, besides TripAdvisor, you can also go on Instagram and check hashtags Mozambique Tourism, Maputo Tourism. You'll find many, many, many attractions there. Facebook, some tourist, um, tourist companies, some tourism companies also have Facebook pages where they show their adventures with photos, reviews and contact. So research is the best way to go. Most people here that do tourism, they are independent, so they usually don't have a big website and they usually use social media because it's free and it's more affordable for them. So, to <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's definitely my advice when it comes to planning a holiday in Mozambique. Next question is from Matt, Matt Pike. And he asks, as a foreigner in Maputo for the first time and I have 24 hours, what is the one thing I have to see before leaving? What is the one thing I have to see and eat before leaving? That's a tricky question. 24 hours in Maputo. I would say you have to have chicken from any of the local spots. They usually season the chicken very well. So that's something that you could have for maybe lunch. And then for dinner, you have to go to the fish market and have you know a fresh fish that they make. Weekends are the best days because there's more people and so on, but you know, we're in the pandemic, so maybe you're better off going on the weekday, but you can have um, fish and then seafood like calamari, prawns, 
with the perfect Mozambican seasoning. So those are the two meals that I think you should have if you come here. You can always have uh, local food, but you may not like it. So it's safer to have the chicken and the fish. And then when it comes to things that you should see, I think you should wake up in the morning and jog around our coastline is one of the most beautiful experiences to have in Maputo. I've showed you guys that in two different vlogs, me running along the seaside. It's amazing, it's beautiful, and it's a unique view. And another experience that I think it's mandatory would be a house party hosted by a local Mozambican. But again, that's not something that everybody can have access to unless you have a friend in Mozambique or you know someone. I'm not included because my house is not big enough for a house party. So I'm not included. But if you know a Mozambican, getting together at their house, listening to Mozambican music, African music, dancing, that would be for sure an experience. Another thing you can do in one day, if you have 24 hours, is cross the bridge to Katembe, go to a restaurant there also to have the fish that I recommended. And yeah, that's what I would say would be a good 24 hours in Moz. Also from Matt Pike, and he asks, if Mozambique was a fruit, what would it be? And this is a hilarious question. Thank you, Matt. Um, again, I don't like to speak about Mozambique because I only have the Maputo perspective. Mozambique is not just Maputo. So if I was to attribute fruits, I would say Inyambane, tofu, which I went on the previous vlog, is definitely coconut. It's also known as the land of coconuts, if you didn't know. That's another name for Inyambane. So Inyambane, I would give coconut. Um, and then if you go up north Zambezia, I would say breadfruit because it's one of the few places in the country where they have breadfruit. And then Maputo, I would say banana because they are so available. Any time of the year you can buy a banana and it's one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest fruit to buy. And yeah, I'll say Maputo is a banana. <laughs> okay, everyone. So we are already losing sun because it's winter here and the sun sets at almost half past four, five. So I'm just gonna leave you guys now with this beautiful view. Of course, I'm gonna do some drone shots so that you can enjoy what I'm enjoying right now. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys on the next one, which hopefully will be sooner than later, okay? Bye. Some got that song